Welcome to Widowed by 30. We're your hosts, Katie and Taylor. We're here to provide raw truth, guidance, and support to those who may be walking a similar path as ours. For even those who have no idea what it's like to lose a spouse. So stick around, grab a glass of wine, and hang out as we dive into all things widowhood. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We are here today to talk about... All we want to do is talk about our spouses. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, that's pretty much it. You know, we, we, and it's different for everyone, but I mean, at least Taylor and I, we are on the same page about it. Yeah. <laughs> which is great because every time we talk, all we do is talk about Josh and Clayton. <laughs> For the most part. Yeah, um, they pretty much would know each other by now. Like, they oh, would, yeah. Yeah. everything about each other. Yeah, I'm sure there's times, like, they're sitting up there together, looking down at us, like. Probably during okay, our we, podcast. Yeah, they're <laughs> like, y'all can stop now. <laughs> y'all sound I was, like, obsessive. Never... <laughs> I know. So I'm like, but I, too. I was obsessed with you, so I will mm-hmm. continue to talk about you. Yeah, um, for sure. But. Like, for me, I feel like I love talking about Josh because, one, like, it makes me feel good. And especially to hear other people talk about him or stories I hadn't heard or forgot about or little things that he did um, before we were together or whatever. Um, But it's like, I also love talking about him because I feel like, if we don't talk about him, people aren't going to remember him, you know? And it's like, I never want mm-hmm. him to be forgotten. So I will forever, until the day I die, talk about him. Yeah. And I will talk about Same. him all the time. And sorry, not sorry, if I talk about him too much, you know? That's just me and how I breathe, maybe. I mean, that's just the reality of it and how I go about it. Right. Yeah, I know. Me too. Um, I definitely, I feel like I talk about Clayton all the time, like the, just the most random conversations. And he always gets brought up and people are like, like, if people didn't know us, they would think that he was still alive and that like, you oh. know, he, like, he's just part of my everyday conversation. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Well, my husband does this. And like, like, it's very rarely yes. that I'm like, he did that or he yeah he was this like it's always like present whenever I'm talking about it and it's mm-hmm. just a habit it's a habit yes. of always talking about him and he was I mean like he's like our lives are so intertwined that anything that has to do with me has to do with him and so yep. our kids like whatever it is you know I just constantly bring him up and not even thinking at times but then it's nice whenever you're having that conversation with somebody that knew both of you guys, you know, and then they, they respond and like, instead of getting like weird or they kind of shut down, they engage in it. And then they'll they'll have like an open conversation with you. I love that because I think that people try to like be very cautious of what they say Yes, yeah, because they don't know how I'm going to react. But I mean, I've said this time and time again, like, please. Yeah. Say his name, like talk again, talk about him, like do the whatever. The chances because... of you bringing him up are actually going to probably make my mood better, you know? Right. Like that's how it is for me. Like if someone right. mentions it, mentions his name or a story or whatever, a question, like it instantly is like, you know, like just yeah. a, that little butterfly feeling. Like last week, Clayton's best friend called me. He calls me every few weeks to check in on me. He's amazing um but they've been best friends since high school and he called me and was like hey Tay, like just checking in you know how are you and the kids da, da, da. and I was telling you about my day and talked about Clayton for a second and he was like somehow we got on this oh I was getting fast food that's what it was and I was like oh I hope I don't get this like ranch over and he starts laughing and it's like oh my gosh you're not gonna like did Clayton ever tell you about the time of the hot sauce? And I was like, no, what hot sauce? And he's like, he was in his Mustang because Clayton was such a car person. Uh-huh. And he had a Mustang um, a while back. 
that he loved. He has, he's had two in the past. But um, one of them, he, I guess it was like him, Jacob, the guy who I was talking to, and somebody else was with them. And they got Jack in the Box tacos and they wanted, like, you know, you put hot sauce on your Jack in the Box tacos. Yep. And Clayton was like, you can eat, but you can't open up the hot sauce. And Jacob was like, what do you mean I'm a grown man? Like, I'm going to open up the hot sauce and put it on my taco and eat it. And he, Clayton was like, no, I'm not. Da, da, da. And they argue over it. And he takes, tries to take the hot sauce from Jacob and he gets all over his car. Because they, they were in his car and that's why he didn't want him to use hot sauce. So oh, him, him being annoying ended up pulling the, like, pulled it open and got all in his car. And then... Jacob was like, well, dumbass, I told you not to. Like, I could have done it. If he would have just let me put the hot sauce on the damn taco, it wouldn't be all over your car right now. But hearing that story, just like, it made me laugh. And it made me like, I could picture him doing that. Like, that's so funny because that is something he would do. It's him being so cautious and then him being the reason why it went everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, dude. I know. But it's funny because like, just little things like that, like, really do make the world of difference like in our just daily lives of hearing something like that it could change our mood completely like you said and it was a good like reminder of like he was so silly like he yes he really like some of the things he did you would like bro i know Come on, babe. get it together but um yeah i really enjoy being able to openly talk about him and even if i do cry like i promise you it's not a sad like it's not a Right. I hate my life cry. It's like, just, I'm not the only one that wants to talk about him all the time. Right. It's the joy. It's like tears of joy. Like, yeah. Okay. I'm not crazy. Like I'm not the only one always talking about him when someone else brings them up, you know? And right. I absolutely love that. And, you know, I, Josh is one of his best girlfriends, Brittany, who we talk multiple times a week, but they always had like an ongoing thing of like her being terrified of this. Well, Josh would send her videos or pictures of said thing. Well, Brittany and I share a fear of snakes. And oh, same. I don't know how you live in the country <laughs> solely for that. Uh, and I'm terrified right now because it's been so dry. Like I have a huge, 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 huge oak tree right in front of the house. Ooh. And because it has not rained, like the leaves are falling like crazy right now. Well, I keep our trash cans like at the end of our driveway. Well, all around the trash cans, it's just like everywhere. And every time I go to take the trash out, I bring something with me or I grab a stick or whatever. And I'm always like moving the leaves because I'm like snakes blend in with leaves. It terrifies me. I'm so Girl. chicken shit. It drives me Absolutely crazy. Absolutely not. Absolutely. But not. Brittany and I, so now it's like I've taken on that role of Josh messing with her all the time. And so anytime I see a snake video or something to do with snakes, like I always send it to her and she calls me and she's like, bitch, like, why are you? I was like, Josh told me I had to. Like, I, I don't know what I didn't do it. Josh told me I had to. <laughs> and so just to like play it off. And then it's like every time we talk, she, she always like just fills me in on like another memory of like back in the day when they were friends and I remember when da 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 and when this happened and this and it like just makes my heart so happy because like at that point in their friendship like I wasn't in the picture yet so right. just to hear how life was before you too and yeah. like how he was yeah like he was a different person but he was the same person and yeah. and then even friends from like back in the day like when he was in the military and a few of them came on my birthday trip with me so like to hear them even bring up stories from like way back then and I say way back then because I was in kindergarten when he enlisted <laughs> into the military <laughs> so it's like which is super weird to think about right now like that's uh, but when you're in an adult <laughs> age does not matter it's just a number but yeah, my used to give him shit about that all the time. Um, I didn't realize he was so, that much older than you. Yeah, he's 14 years older than me. Oh my god, that's funny. I know. And my mom was like, "You were getting laid for the first time, and I was still wiping Katie's ass." And 
like they would just give him so much shit about our age That's difference funny. and but it's like I love it because our age difference is I think what made our relationship work you know just the yeah different stages of life and maturity levels and I was or I am I think very mature for my age um when you're a young mom at a very young age yeah. you have no choice but to grow up so it just worked out yeah, that's but true. anyway um so yeah I mean it's just like I love when I see I used to avoid Brittany's calls at all all the time just because I avoided everyone's calls but it's like now that I know how our conversations go and that it's like always uplifting and she's probably my biggest supporter and motivator and just everything when I see her call it's like it rings one time and I answer and she's like I don't know what to do anymore because like you're answering my calls now and you're not avoiding me and I love to hear your voice and but it's like I know she's gonna talk about Josh so maybe it's me being selfish (laughs) in answering her calls yeah need that though and like I love that so much and she always has the funniest stories to tell about him and it's like I can talk about him non-stop and like we clown him and talk so much shit about him at the same time because I think that's why I like his friends too because like Mm -hmm. they will you know they oh yeah they don't feel like they're gonna step on my toes or disrespect me by like you know they're like well, you knew who he was, like, yeah, you're the one who married him. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm not gonna stop talking about him, like, you know, I'm gonna talk shit all I want. That's literally how they are, and I think that that's why, like, I don't talk, like I told you earlier, I don't like talking on the phone, but, like, I'll pick up the phone and talk to Jacob, because even if it's a five-minute conversation, I know that he's calling to, like, obviously check on our well-being, and then, like, yep. we'll end up talking about Clayton, yep. and so it's, it is nice, and I think that people just are, like, afraid that they're going to hurt feelings or, you know, disrespect somebody if they bring it up. And it's it's really not, like, a negative thing because if you, like, they lived for X amount of years. Like, they were a human being. They were here. They were part of all of our lives. It's, like, why leave – like, I feel like if you don't talk about them, then you're just leaving them in the dust. And they they will only become a memory. Like, they didn't matter yeah yeah or exist thing we want exactly right and I'm like I want my Um, kids like I want everybody that's in my family or in my life to tell my kids stories about their dad yeah you know I want that to always be a thing and I don't want it to be like oh yeah well we knew your dad but like okay well you knew them or you knew him but like what about them what about them right Yeah. yeah and so I think it's a very crucial thing um especially when kids are in the mix to keep oh, their memory sure. alive. Yep. And to constantly talk about them. And I like, you're not hurting anybody's feelings by doing that. Unless that widow or widower does say, hey, right. I can't talk about him because that might be their way of grieving. But for me personally, that's not the case. Yeah. And I was just about to say that, you know, there are those out there that don't like talking about their spouse that passed away. And I mean, and and that's the way they choose to deal with it. But I feel like they are very also open about that right from the get go. Right. Like, I'm not comfortable mentioning his or her name. I'm not comfortable with this. And you have to respect that, you know, like even if. Like, for instance, even like say I didn't like talking about Josh or mentioning his name or whatever. And Brittany does. Well, cool I appreciate that you still like to talk about him and mention him but go talk about him and mention him in conversations with other people that knew him you don't have to have that conversation with me but thankfully that's not the case and like I'll talk about him all day long I Um, think too and I could be wrong but I would think that oh my god it's raining is it Mm -hmm. (laughs) um but I would I know. Sorry. But what I would think would be people not wanting to talk about their spouses would be like, and I could be wrong, but maybe that they think that whoever brings it up is going to just solely talk about like the death. 
And yeah, yeah. we don't want to talk about the death. That you're right. right. Like in that aspect, but we want to still talk about who they were and memories of them. You don't have to just talk about their death all the time. Like that, that is a very depressing and sad. And it does put us yes. in a front when yep. we think of the last moments of their lives. Mm-hmm. But what we do enjoy talking about is the life that we created with them and that the friendships that y'all created with them, you know, or whatever it was, like y'all had a relationship yeah. and we like right. to hear about it. Yeah. So just take that into consideration. It's not that we don't want to hear about them, but we don't want to hear about their death. That's yes. what it is. Yeah. Because we deal and, with that daily. Right. The reminiscing on those final moments, you know, right. like that's nothing about that is fun. And, but their lives as a whole mm-hmm. is, I can't lift my hair today. Um, their lives as a whole is, what we want to talk about the the good and the bad memories like if even if it's a shitty story and as long as it doesn't involve their death you know like yeah I will I will talk about him all day long and don't get me wrong like there are some instances where like I have gone into detail with a handful of people about you know his accidents and things like that and but do I enjoy talking about that? No. Is it hard? Absolutely. freaking um, Yeah. And it's like, even this morning I woke up and I had a message from one of Josh's friends from like way back in the day who had been off social media and hadn't posted on social media since 2013. Cause I was like, I don't even know this person. I've never heard his name. Like Josh, unless I just over didn't listen, whatever. But I was, so then of course I go into stalker mode and like, he hadn't posted anything since 2013. And he messaged me and was like, I've been off of social media. I just got back on and I saw Josh passed away. Oh my God. I'm so sorry for your loss. What the hell happened? When did he pass away? You know, he was asking all the questions that everyone normally asks at the beginning. At the beginning. Right. And so it's like, now I wake up this morning and I'm like, you know, th- that like that stress and that anxiety of like, I don't want to be an asshole and be like, it's none of your business because it's like, everyone knows what happened. Yeah. So it's, it's like, you know, it's to respond and it, it's hard. Oh, well, because once you start like typing that stuff out and then like reading it, it's like, it just hits you all over again. Like it's different yeah. thinking the, it, the reality of but it, pushing it out there is yeah. Yeah. It no is, doubt. For sure. Um, but, and, and I, I noticed a huge difference, like, especially around Maddie, you know, you were talking about for our kids and stuff, Maddie loves talking about Josh and she's always like my papa bear, this and my papa bear, that, and always mentioning him. And, and I love that she loves to talk about him too. And there's so many times, like we even have our own discussions together about it and okay it just, sorry side note what? all I can think about is you posting that prank <laughs> of oh, him and I watched it like five times he was like oh what <laughs> yes so if y'all follow me on sorry social media <laughs> and no you're good if y'all follow me on social media and y'all probably saw that I shared it the other day but a few years ago, there was that shut up challenge, shut up prank where like the parent asked the kid to go do something and they yell like shut up to prank the other parent. Well, Maddie and I did it to Josh. It and... would have been funnier though if you weren't laughing from the very okay. beginning. You ruined it. I did, but I thought like <laughs> I ruined it completely because I was like, well, that gave it away. But he was still, I was like, okay. he was pissed. He was pissed. <laughs> and I thought me laughing was going like I was like damn I fucked it up but he was like what was that and I was just like uh I was like what do I say I was like she's been in a mood and like he kept going along with it and so I was like oh shit like he's falling for this and everyone always messages me because at the end of the video he's like stop recording and everyone's like, so what did he say after you stopped recording? You should have kept recording. I'm like, I know I should have. But he did say, he was like, 
we were about to have a come to Jesus in this house and the, the neighbors would have been calling CPS because nobody's going to disrespect nobody under my roof. Like it was just this long thing. And Maddie and I were dying. It was the funniest <laughs> thing. Um, but... I know she comes down immediately and is laughing and I'm like, Oh my God. Well, I'm pushing <laughs> because like respect is a huge thing in our house. Like you do not talk to anyone like that. And so when I told her we were going to do that break, she was like, mom, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm going to get grounded forever if I tell you to shut up. And I was like, baby, you're not going to get grounded. It's a pr-. like, she was terrified to do the prank. And it was the best thing ever. And I think we did it in like 21. And like, every time it comes up on my memories, like, I always reshare it. And I die laughing every time. It's funny. It the like, that's a, that's ever. a good one. That's- it is. And everyone was like, the signature Josh face like when he initially <laughs> turns around and he was like what the fuck is going on like why are those words coming out of her mouth he's just over oh. there playing his little game yes <laughs> trying to relax after getting home from work and here we are stressing him out <laughs> i know it was funny sorry i totally cut you off but that like no as you're talking about maddie it just like instantly popped in my head and it was when like, i was I wondering why laugh. you were laughing i was like do i have something on my face why is she laughing at me <laughs> It popped in my head, and I was going to wait to say something, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> you're good. Um, anyway, continue. Sorry, but, Potter. Holy no, you're good. You're good. So, it, like, but for instance, Maddie always wanting to talk about him and stories and things like that. When that video popped up on my memories, I was like, look. And she was like, oh, that was so funny. She was like, but, Mom, I was so scared to do that. <laughs> I was like, I know. I remember you were stressing out. And she was like, and then when he called me down the stairs, I was like, I'm about to be grounded for the rest of my life. <laughs> you probably got so, a wedding soon ready for me. <laughs> oh, God, I know. It was just, it was the funniest thing. Um, I wish so, that we were able to do something like that with Clayton, because would have been, he would have been the same way. He'd have been like, yeah. and he does the funniest faces. Like, his confused and like, you did not just do that. Like, faces yeah. Yeah. are hilarious. Like, I can just picture it in my head right now. And it would yeah. have been so able to see our kids do that to him because he'd have been like, Excuse me? Huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I know. Literally. Almost like that. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. But I don't know. And then, like, for you, because the kids are so little, it's like, you know, you have to continue those stories and tell those stories because if you don't, will, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah, I'm sure there's family members <clears throat> and things like that. But they are with you 24 seven. And like, like I said, at the beginning, we are the only ones to continue living their memories out. Yeah. And, and like your kids depend on you for that. And so it's like, even if you didn't want to talk about him anymore, like you kind of have to, you know? Yeah. And, and or, I like I mean, being I able to you could be selfish and not, but no, but I like, I mean, I, I like to, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I even enjoy like Clayton's mom and Carly and his dad and Mika, like everybody telling us stories about them. And it's cool because River and Dallas are pretty much like the same years apart as Clayton and Carly. So okay. when they do things, except like Carly was the oldest and Clayton was the youngest. And so it's okay. vice versa. But it's fun whenever. Like for instance, yesterday they were doing something, and Carly was like, I have Clayton and I used to like do the exact same thing, you know, and like put each other in like headlocks, you know, whatever it was, like as little kids, uh-huh. you know. And she, it's cool to be able to like refer them to our kids. And yeah. so, like, I know that makes her happy too, kind of just being able to see it like on the next generation. It's almost and like stuff. a flashback. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, it's cool. It's cool to hear, like, stories from when he was a kid that I didn't know about. Like, there's a video of Carly and him wrestling. And I saw it years ago. And it's so funny because she straight up got a cheap shot on him and kicked him straight in the you-know-what. And it's on video. And it's so funny. You can just see him go, oh. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I'm like, you could have stopped him from having our kids. Like, what is wrong with you? You could have ruined our future. I know, but um, it was really funny. But, like, little things like that are really cool to see, like, on video. My aunt was just talking about how she found, um, like, a cassette that has my dad's voice on it. And so she was talking. I know, and I don't even remember what my dad sounded like. Like, I was four. 
right the same age as Dallas. And yeah. I don't want, like, thankfully, you know, we live in a day and age where, like, we have technology all the videos and yeah. technology and stuff. So that will never be an issue. But, like, for instance, she has that. And so she's going to get it um, made to where, like, I can get a copy of it. And I can have it because I don't know how, yeah. sounds, you know, and if I had it growing up, it would have been a lot easier to be able to be like, I could hear it that and was know his it voice. Was, yeah. Right. And I don't want my kids to ever not have that. So yeah. even though technology is like a one now, if I don't show them, then how are they going to know? They won't know. Exactly. Right. And so that's um, a huge thing for me too, is I want them to be able to, you know, always when they're not even in the room that they hear his voice like no yeah I know and it was crazy because like that video we were just talking about of the prank we did on Josh when it played out and I heard him speak like I lost it because it's yeah like I remember his voice like I don't remember his voice so to actually hear it I was like oh it Mm -hmm. brought up all these emotions because it's like it's been six months since I've heard that voice you know so it's like like in real uh, time yeah I'm crying again um it's just hard not being able to like yeah we have all the videos and things like that and it's it is great but then at the same time it's Again, tears of joy, but it's also that reminder of, like, I selfishly want more. Like, I I want that voice back here, you know? I don't want to have to listen to it through a video, but I am forever grateful to have the videos to be able to listen to his voice. Right. Because I could have nothing, you know? Um, but, oh, God, I know. It's that part of it is very hard because when you go like, yeah, he was gone a lot and traveled a lot, but it's like, I talked to him all the time, you know, Mm -hmm. and there'd be days we'd be on the phone and just, I'd be in the house cleaning and he was driving and like, we weren't even saying anything. (laughs) Yeah. But it's just just like the presence, the the presence presence of of it. Yes. Then he'd be like, what are you doing? I'm like washing dishes five minutes later. What are you doing now? Still washing dishes like <laughs> I know you can hear the water running in the background you know just it all of those little things are just like yeah what make those memories so much better you know right. it, it it is all the little things like yeah the grand gestures are all great and you'll never forget those but there's things I do in our day-to-day life and I'm like oh I remember this You know, and it's all those little memories that make up the whole that I feel like play the biggest part in, in their memory, you know, because everyone's like, oh, I remember when your mom and Papa Bear got married, you know, talking to Maddie. It's like, well, yeah, everyone remembers when we got married, Mm -hmm. but what about all the other things, you know, the little things that everyone wasn't there for, you know, that's all the stuff that make them who they were in my opinion and I mean but you know, we don't even have like we don't have all the the core memories with them either oh, no. you know like his no. friends and yes. people that have been there from the very beginning like they can tell things that we can't and it might yeah. be something that made them who they are that made them the person for you you know and yep. having your kids hear about that is I don't even know the word indescribable like it really it, is. it is yeah I know and it's like I love when we get together um when he was in the military his bunkmate Clint him and his wife Jen are amazing and she came with us to Napa um but like they've known Josh since he was 18 when he enlisted into the military Clint right. and Jen were already dating and like just to hear Lord have mercy. The stories they've told about Josh when he was 18 and in the military and like some of them they've told to Maddie or they've told me and I've told Maddie. She's like, he did what? 
Like <laughs> she's just so amazed by some of these things. And then like, as she gets older, you know, I'm going to tell her of other stories. Is she right. too young to hear about them now? Absolutely. Like right. <laughs> some of those things he did, he shouldn't have. But it's like, it made him the person he was right. today, you know? Right. And the reason we lived our lives the way we lived our lives and, and things like that. And, you know, like she always talks about how Josh always taught her to be aware of her surroundings you know, and him having that military background and always being observant and aware of your surroundings and you never know what to expect and things like that. So it's like now, anytime we go anywhere, she's like, mom, you see that car over there? I'm like, yeah. She was like, it's running and there's someone in the front seat, but they're like not moving. I'm like, okay, like you're stressing me out because like I sit in my car all the time. I am so bad at that. Like I am so bad (laughs) at that. I would not. There's even times like we'll go grocery shopping and she was like, Mom, that man has followed us for like three aisles. So then I'm like mama bear protect mode. And I'm usually good about because you always hear those horror stories of. Yeah. Like, and now he's at like a prime age right now. Like you got it. I know it stresses me out. She's always like, can I go on this aisle? I'm like, no, you stay right here next to me. You are not wandering anywhere. Someone mm-hmm. snatch you up in a heartbeat. Um, yeah. But it's like. She, she loves that though. Like I remember Papa Bear taught me this or, you know, when one time we went and do this and he taught me, you know, when you do this, you always handle it this way or, you know, and he would always like quiz her on situations. Like if someone tried to do this or grab you or whatever. Aww, hi baby. Say hi, boom. Say hi. Um, you know, he, he was just very, okay. Thank you for the kisses. <laughs> Get down. <laughs> down. He's um, making you feel better, Mom. I know. He's the one that, like, this was Josh's baby. They share a birthday. They are very much personalities the same. Everything's the same. And, like, when I'm having a day, he is, thank you. <laughs> he does not leave my side. Like, he snuggles me. He's around me every part of it. He's. Hey, it's so he's cool. like an emotional support dog. Okay, get down. That's enough. Let me get <laughs> outside real quick. Hold on. Um, we'll clip this part out. Uh, really? I need a phone ball. Did he knock the whole thing off because I had it charging? No, you're going on your leash because I can't watch you. Knock the whole tripod over and everything. (laughs) Do you adjust myself again? Ten percent. Damn. I feel like we're almost finished with this one anyway, so it's fine. Yeah, we're, we are. All right. Anyway, sorry about the puppy interruption. Um, <laughs> okay. But anyway, Maddie, Maddie just, Maddie lives for the stories as well, even though I just said her name like 10 times. I don't know why I did that. But, um, you know, it's, it's not only a good thing for us, but I feel like it's also a good thing for our kids, for our friends yeah. and our family um, to hear those things and to speak those things and and maybe we do it more than others but I don't care you know I will forever be his biggest fan and his biggest supporter and his biggest everything um his biggest pain in the ass I mean his biggest stress you know (laughs) yeah uh, what is a wife for um and so it's just something, you know, and maybe years down the road, like, it'll be different. And I won't, I don't see it happening, but maybe it'll be different. And I won't want to talk about him as much anymore. But for right now, in this stage of my grieving, like, that's all I want to do, you know, and I will forever 
constantly talk about him. Yeah, I agree. So, I mean, yeah, that's that's my intake on talking about him. Um, just friendly advice, guys. Just do it. Yep. Yep. Talk about him. And they I feel here. like if you talk about said person with someone and, like, you don't ever get a reaction out of them or a response, maybe they don't want to talk about them but they just don't want to tell you because you want to talk about them so it's also one of those where it's like read the room type scenarios Mm -hmm. um because I feel like if the person's engaging and adding on to a story or bringing up new stories like then obviously they're comfortable with that but I know some people won't speak up and stick up for themselves and say, look, I'm not comfortable talking about him or her. Um, so yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's one of those, again, read the room situations and just kind of take it from there. But I know when people mention Josh's name, I'm like, big smile on my face. And I'm immediately like, just intrigued, like, okay, what am I going to learn today? Like, what about yeah. me? Did I not know? Am I about to figure out in this moment? Right. So, um, but anyway, so yeah. I guess, I don't know, that's all I have on the topic. I don't know if you have anything else you want to add. No, that's pretty much, I'm pretty straightforward on this one. No. Cool deal. Well, we love y'all and appreciate y'all. And we have a long list of topics. But it seems like we struggle every week on what we should talk about. Um, because it's like every week we have different feelings about different topics. So Mm -hmm. what is it y'all want to hear us talk about or speak on? Um, I'd love, we would love feedback on that. Um, there's been a few episodes that y'all wanted to hear and we've recorded and they were great. So I guess what next, what do y'all want to know about? whatever um yeah feedback is huge and um yeah we do have a lot of people that do um you know send us messages and comment and things like that but um if you guys can just send us a dm or even comment on our post of what you guys are wanting next then you know we'll make it happen yep for sure and i mean i feel like when it's something y'all actually want to know and want to listen to um that kind of steers us in a more organized direction of, <laughs> of how the conversation is going to go. So, um, but anyway, we love you guys and appreciate y'all and we will chat with y'all next week. Love you guys. Love y'all.